how to write your ultrasound report like a pro in the UK. Now, before I start, I know. I know you are a pro wherever you are. I know. No wahala. I know they follow you, I give. What I'm saying, however, is that where you're practicing now, there are some things that might be important to you there as far as report writing goes that may not be so important in the UK. And there are some things that may be really important in the UK as a sonographer who is writing your own report that may not be so important where you are. So you see, I've still got some value to bring to you today. So listen up, okay? I'll be telling you all the things that you have to have in your report if you're working as a sonographer and you're writing your own report in the UK. Okay, now it's going to be a quick one. I'm going to delve right into it. Before I do that, though, my name is Rajuno. I am a sonographer in the UK and I have worked both in Nigeria and in the UK as a sonographer. So I kind of have experienced the best of both worlds, which is why I'm here today to tell you what I have to tell you. The things to include in your report to help you embrace your prostatus to the fullest. Okay. Number one, you're scanning your patient. Have you got a chaperone in the room with you while you're scanning? You have put that in your report. Make sure to write that in your report. Now, chaperones could be either a healthcare assistant, it could be a radiology department assistant, it could even be your colleague, a fellow sonographer, it could be a trainee sonographer, a trainee radiographer. As long as you've got a chaperone in the room with you, it is good practice to put that in your report, okay? All right, number two, you're scanning your patient. Did you get verbal consent from that patient before you scanned? You did? put it in your report, right? That you obtain verbal consent from the patient, okay? Now, this is especially important when you're dealing with sensitive examinations, you know, like transvaginal scans, for instance, even testis scans, scrolls scans, sensitive body parts like that, that your scanning is more important that you actually document that you had verbal consent from the patient. All right, so number three now, you're doing a pelvic scan. You've seen the right ovary, you've seen the uterus, but you can't find the left ovary, you can't see the left ovary write that you did not see the left ovary. Don't ever write that in your report that you saw what you did not see, okay? So only document the findings that you have seen in your report. See this particular number three, very, very important. I don't want this video to be long, so I'm not gonna explain too much, but just know that you should only document the things that you have seen. Don't assume something is normal when it's not, just document that, okay? Now, number four, you were scanning the abdomen, okay and then because of excessive bowel gas for instance you could not see the pancreas or because the patient would not breathe in and out properly it was difficult for you to scan let's say the kidneys for instance now what are those things called they're your limitations include your limitations in your report very important okay do not compromise on this one because you don't want to give the impression that you scanned an organ optimally adequately satisfactorily when you didn't because of your limitations so state your limitations all right okay now we're already in number four and you've not yet subscribed to my channel uh -uh. all wrong go and subscribe to my channel okay it motivates me to keep doing this all right okay so number five now now number five is in two parts the first part is prioritize significant findings in your report put it at the top of your report. You don't want to hide significant findings in the middle of your report so that when the referring clinician actually looks at your report, they see whatever may be wrong, a pathology or something right away as soon as they read your report. Yeah, so do that. Now, the second part of number five, if there's no significant pathology, then what you should prioritize at the start of your report should be answering the clinical question. There's a reason why the patient came to you in the first place. There was a clinical indication in the request, isn't it? So you should start by answering the clinical question. Yeah. So if there is a pathology and it does not, what you see, let's say you see a clinic, um, a splenic mass and the pathology was query gallstone, right? So you want to start it with the more significant finding here, which is the splenic mass, the suspicious splenic mass, for instance, you know, if you think it has malignant fe features. So you put that at the top of your report. And then the next thing that would follow would be, the, you know, answering the clinical question, any gallstone scene? Okay, no gallstone scene. And then you carry on with the rest of your report. Okay, so 
Number five basically is structuring your report such that the most important thing is prioritized at the top first. And then you answer the clinical question as well. If the clinical question answers, you know, if the clinical um, question is answered with the pathology that you found, it's a win-win, it's still the same thing. So you're right at the top of your report, okay? So number six now, do you put a conclusion in your report? You don't? Well, you could consider it. It is considered recommended good practice, okay? So try to put a conclusion in your report where you summarize your findings and then tie it to the clinical question. It is recommended, not a do or die affair, but well recommended. So it's something to think about, okay? Number seven, did you follow any departmental protocols during the course of your scan and your reporting? Did you? Did you call the ward? Did you call the doctor? Did you send an email to the doctor? Did you send the patient for CT? Any departmental protocols that you followed, be sure to include that in your report. Make sense? Try to write everything that you did. It's part of documentation. It shows that you did what you were supposed to do within the remits of your job. That way, if there's any issue in the future, they can always look back and see that you did what you were supposed to do. So document any departmental pathway protocols that you follow. Okay? All right. So we'll move on to number eight. Now, this is not compulsory, but it's recommended that you put your ID and position at the end of your report, you know. So when you're done scanning, you could just put scanned and reported by Rajuno sonographer okay now this is especially important when you're working with someone so sometimes you're working with another sonographer and it is your login or the person's login already so at the end of the report it's good to be really clear about who did the scan if you put did it you put it if it's just you you put it and then sometimes you're working with a trainee sonographer right so this the trainee is the one that actually scanned and then reported so you can always put scanned and reported by this trainee sonographer supervised by Rajuno supervised by me. Make sense? So it is not um, compulsory, so to speak, but it is good practice to put your idea at the base of your report. All right. Now, the overall general tip is number nine now. Now, number nine, it is keep it simple. Do not bombard your report with too much grammar and jargons. It's not necessary in the UK. You just keep it simple. Say what you want to say with plain English, simple English, straight to the point, you know, so that anyone who's picking up your report can just read it, understand it, act on it, treat or manage the patient quicker. You get it? Okay. So do not overcomplicate your report with too much grammar. Co necessary. It's not necessary. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you a rundown of everything that I have mentioned so far, starting from number one to number nine. So number one is there's a sharp run in the room, documented in your report. Number two, you got consent from the patient, documented in your report. Number three, in the course of your scan, you saw or didn't see something, only document the things that you saw, only document your findings, okay? Do not document things you didn't see. Number four, you had any limitations in the course of your scan, write that in your report, very important. Then number five, prioritize significant findings and answering the clinical question at the start of your report. Okay. Now, number six is put a conclusion, a summary, an impression in your report. It's recommended. Okay. Number seven is make sure to include any departmental pathway protocols that you follow, regardless of how little or big it is documented in your report. Okay. Number eight, write your name your title at the base of your report, especially if you're working with someone. So you write both your names at the end of the report. Number nine, keep it simple. From start to finish, keep your report simple. Try to use plain, simple English. That way, anybody who picks up your report can understand and act on it right away. Okay, so I hope I've been able to bring some value to your doorstep today, in which case I do need you to go and subscribe. Okay, click the button below and subscribe. It does motivate me. It encourages me to keep doing this. So go and subscribe and then share this video to as many people you know that need it. Okay, and then drop a comment. Tell me the kind of videos you'd like for me to make going forward. It would be really helpful and help me to plan as well. Okay, that being said, on my website, I do have very interesting related posts. Okay, 
related to working in Nigeria and in the UK as a sonographer, you know, very enlightening post. So you might want to go check that out. The latest of my posts would be the similarities between ultrasound practice in Nigeria and ultrasound practice in the UK. So I do have that and I'm going to drop a link in my description box below. Please feel free to look through that post, explore the entire website, okay? And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.